Hello and welcome back to the Niagara Particle series tutorial thing. In the last video, we looked at all of the ways that we can spawn particles so we can start their lifetime in Niagara. This time we're going to be looking at all of the different ways that we can add velocity at the beginning of a particle's life. So let's jump straight into it. We have a completely empty blank emitter. Uh, you can see that it isn't doing anything. So first thing we're going to do is on a meter update, we are going to spawn, uh, we'll do a spawn rate. And if we put that up to 10, so 10 particles spawn per second, you can see we have a white dot. Now, the reason this is just a white dot is because these particles are not moving. So what we need to do is on particle spawn, meaning this only happens when the particle gets spawned, we want to something something velocity the main one being add velocity now this says has unmet dependencies as you can see it tells you exactly what to do so we just need to do a solve forces and velocity in the particle update and we're good so in the add velocity module it says add velocity so if i add 200 in the x velocity uh you can see that all these particles are just they're moving at 200 units a second uh, in the X axis. The other thing we could do is click on velocity and go random vector. So this is going to choose a random vector in 3D space. It will be a unit vector, so it only has a length of one, hence why these aren't moving very far. But we can get this vector scale and increase it to, you know, 100 or something. And as you can see now, each of these are moving 100 units per second in, you know, whatever direction was randomly assigned to them. Uh, we can also get this vector scale and do another random range float. And we could scale this between, you know, 50 and 200 units. And now it's choosing a random initial speed between 50 and 200. We can also down here prioritize different uh, velocity so we could say okay we want the z velocities to be you know twice as much as the x and the y and maybe we don't want them to be moving in the x velocity at all but we still want it to be random everywhere else so this is a way that you could do you know something that's like flat on one axis but going randomly in other ones so that is probably the the simplest and maybe the most common uh, velocity module on particle spawn Another one that is worth having a look at is add velocity from point. So again, this one is kind of like random vector uh, if they're all spawning from, you know, a point. However, if we said particle spawn, uh, sphere, location. So you can see here that the particles are all spawning at a random point in this sphere. And the velocity is always radiating out from the center of this sphere. Whereas alternatively, if we were to choose just a purely random vector, you can see that even though these particles are spawning within this sphere, they then choose a random direction completely, you know, not taking the, the center of the sphere into account. So that's one way that add velocity from point differs from, you know, just choosing a random velocity. You can also change the origin of this point that the velocity is like calculated out from. So maybe if you wanted to kind of prioritize upward movement, but still using the, you know, from the point, um, you could move the origin down so that, you know, more often than not, they are moving upwards, but some still go downwards. You kind of get the point. Another very important one is add velocity in cone. And what this does, if we just put the velocity strength up to 200 or something, um, this will say what's the axis of the cone. So, you know, maybe we want it to be going upwards like this in the, the Z axis. And what is the angle of the cone? So if the cone is 45 degrees, it will, you know, have a cone that is 45 degrees uh, in angle. Whereas if, you know, we put it to 90, then it will be even wider. But there's another setting in here called the velocity distribution along cone axis. So I've got set this to one currently, which I believe is like a, a uniform distribution. If we go to, I don't know, anything above one, you'll see that there's this kind of beam here 
uh, because most of them are choosing to go along the axis of the cone. And from that, we can deduce that a value below one is going to prioritize the outside uh, edges more. So I usually stick with one for most cases of this. Uh, now there is also a velocity fall off away from cone axis, which basically means anything on the outsides will not receive as much velocity. So you can see that the ones that are towards the outside of this are moving slower. Uh, if we do like this up to 10 or something, then it's even more, you know, these ones are really, really slow. So this could be used to do something like, you know, a water fountain. Um, just excuse the very quick mock-up that I've made. <laughs> uh, but if I just chuck this up higher, you can see that the ones that kind of go to the outside have less velocity and, you know, they're the kind of uh, like the flyaway drops, I guess. So we are nearing the end of our add velocity journey. Uh, one more I want to look at is the vortex velocity. So you can see that I've added this vortex velocity module, but it isn't doing anything at all. And that's because all of these particles are just spawning in the very center of our scene or the very center of our emitter. So what we need to do is just add a sphere location before this vortex velocity happens. And, you know, this has a radius of this much. So what this vortex velocity does is it gets the center point and then it adds a velocity, you know, out in, I mean, you can see when it spawns what it, what it is doing. And we can also choose the axis. So if it was the X axis, then it would go around this way. Um, and there's also a fall off radius. So basically you can see with the settings influence fall off exponent, I've just put it up quite high so we can like really see what's going on. Uh, you can see that the ones in the center aren't moving as fast as the ones on the outside. Now keep in mind that all of these velocities on particle spawn, they are only for the, you know, the very start of the particle simulation. They're not going to be constantly updated throughout. That would be something that happens in the particle update, um, which these ones are usually called force forces. So like if we were doing something like a vortex force rather than a vortex velocity, then this would be updating continuously over time. So you can see that this one actually creates, you know, spirals and these continue to go around this circle. You can see that this acts very differently to this, which just shoots them out in like a straight line, you know, a straight trajectory. So it's always good to keep that in mind with particles, you know, is this a continuous force that you want to be applying every frame or is this just something that has to happen at the, you know, the start of the particle's life. So the very last one we're going to look at is one called inherit velocity. So by default, this is just going to inherit the velocity of the owner of this system. So, you know, that could just be itself. So if I chuck this in the world and we start to move it around, obviously without snapping on, this is a lot bigger than I thought it was. Um, you can see that when I start moving this around, the particles inherit the velocity of, you know, this thing at the time that they were spawned. So if you had this attached to something, then, you know, the particles would kind of fly off of it like this, um, which is a really good effect to have in your tool belt. You can also set a speed limit. So if the speed limit was at 100, no matter how fast I move this, the particles would only move at a maximum of 100 units. If we didn't have a speed limit on this, so I think if you put the speed limit at zero, uh, it might, oh no, I can just untick it, obviously. So if we didn't have a speed limit on this, then, oh shit, shitting fuck. So if we didn't have a speed limit on this, then we would get some real extreme, uh, <laughs> extreme stuff going on, so. You know, this might be what you were looking for. It might not be. So something that you'll very often want to do when you're doing something like this is add drag to your um, particle update. So this will just slow them down over time. We will be looking at drag in a future video. So you can see, you know, these will kind of shoot off and then slow down until they completely stop. Um, it's also a very important effect to know about. So those are all of the basic ways that you can 
add initial velocity to your particles. You know, you can do random velocities, you can do it from a point. Um, one other thing that I should mention is you can stack multiple of these together. So we could do inherit velocity plus vortex velocity, which would give us something like, you know, this. So it's, it's doing that vortex velocity, but it's also inheriting the, the velocity um, of the object and, and whatever. And, you know, even something like inherit velocity, but we want to add a little bit of randomness to it. So, you know, we add a random velocity with a scale of 200 or something. And so that will, you know, shoot these particles in random directions, but also um, add the, you know, the velocity of the object. Um, so always really important to keep in mind, you can just stack these on top of each other. You don't just have to choose one and try and figure out a way to, you know, do whatever you wanted to do. And with stacking like the spawning velocities, um, you don't really have to worry about performance because it's just going to calculate the velocity as a one off and then, you know, use that for the rest of the particles lifetime. Whereas something like forces, the more you stack on top of each other, the more noticeable the performance cost is. So that concludes the video. I hope you learned something new. Uh, even if you're a, a particle veteran. If you did, make sure that you like this video and subscribe, ring the bell for more, you know, videos and stuff. I apologize for my husky, deep voice. Uh, sorry, I'm not as enthusiastic as I usually am, uh, but I have been a little bit sick. If you do want more content, I actually stream most days of the week at twitch.tv slash prismaticadev, where I'm always working on Prismatica. Uh, it's always a lot of fun. Come and join us. And if you do want to support this channel monetarily, you can do so through the Patreon, which is linked in the description for as little as $1 per month. And with that, I say goodbye. Goodbye.